I pushed the recording button. We, we're embargoing the show. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Until um, sometime, sometime later. So, oh, I got the title up. Everyone can tell. September-ish. Um, and this isn't the show yet. This is the pre-show, but um, just because people like seeing behind the scenes. And we got your photographer, Jonathan, is taking pictures. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so the question is, uh, am I interviewing you or are you interviewing me? Um, well, I would actually prefer, let's start with you interviewing me. Um, I'm normally the interviewer, but um, since this is your, your pad, I will. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, any, if any questions come up, feel free. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and b before we're officially rolling, oh, this is, th these are my extensive notes for the interview. Well, fantastic. I'm, okay. I'm really prepared. I never prepare that much. <laughs> um, I'd have one embarrassing question to ask. Okay. Your name is Amber Keister. It is. Is that a married name? It is. You chose that. Absolutely. So this guy, you still married to him? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. We've been married for, it will be, let's see, it will be 22 years in, uh, at the end of August. I'm not the first person to bring this topic up. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you picked him. Uh-huh. You, you said, okay, Aunt, what, was your, what was your maiden name? It was Bowers. Okay, so Amber Bowers, nothing there. Not, just nice, pleasant. Name. absolutely so you put amber keister together and said i'm marrying this guy anyway <laughs> it comes with the territory you know all right but, I, I think anybody who knows me knows that i have a good sense of humor so yeah. uh if you can't laugh at yourself who can you laugh at that I, I, this is the type of show we do so no, it's, and uh, as my children say, you know, I love a good uh, a fart joke, so it's it's all good. <laughs> you and my wife would get along just fine. She is she is at work. She's she's one type of person. Mm -hmm. At and and at at home, she's actually more reserved unless the fart jokes come on, and then she, <laughs> all hell breaks loose. That's what I get for uh, my children. Keep me grounded and <laughs> and sane. I think so. Okay. So, um, let's see, uh, make sure that your title is correct here. Senior editor, Carrie magazine. That is me. All right. Let's, um, oh, that, not the button I wanted to push. Let's, um, let's do a show from the studio in the bonus room above the garage on the north side of Carrie at the foot of Mount Belzoni, this is the Triangle Talk Show. It is, uh, it is September-ish. I don't know what the date is. There's a reason I don't know what the date is, because um, we're, we're embargoing this program until later, and then we'll, we'll put it out. It's going to be somewhere around the 1st of September, maybe even very, very late August. It is tied to magazine publication. Uh, the title of the program is, uh, well, it's also episode 70-something, because I'm assuming we'll be up to the 70s by the time this episode comes out, but I don't know for sure. We'll find out. Uh, the title of the episode is Editing Carry, or for those of you looking at the picture, got a little Carry Magazine thing there, Editing Carry Magazine. And uh, my guest here in the studio is, oh, wait a minute, I'm Gary Pierce. <laughs> I forgot about my little joke there in the, on my title. Mr. September. Ah, very good. Okay. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm going to be the cover or the centerfold. <laughs> That's up to... Uh, it's not up to you. <laughs> not up to me. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're the senior editor. Because there we go. There's Amber Keister, senior editor, Carry Magazine. This all came about because uh, you sent me email saying, can we come do an interview? Can you do a podcast? Absolutely. It's in Carry. It is at the uh, studio in the bonus room above the garage at the foot of Mount Belzoni. Somebody's going to ask me what that means someday. Maybe I should have asked that. Um, yeah, this, I am very grateful to Gary welcoming me to his bonus room. Um, <laughs> and it really is. It's just, this is the bonus room. I mean, you can see. This all came about because 
I am a huge pod- podcast listener, and um, it came to my attention that there were many, many small niche podcasts in Western Wake County. And what better story for a magazine that writes about the people and places uh, and events in Western Wake County than to talk about what people are doing and what people are interested in. And a lot of the general interest podcasts, or even the niche podcasts, they really take a deep dive into people's interests. And um, it's it's been a lot of fun to really learn what people are talking about and learn what people are listening to. And podcasting is hot. Podcasting it's, it's is the new it's the new thing. It is very hot. It is very hot even in the summer. But um <laughs> well, if you if you look at the general media, podcasting is back. It came, apparently it went. I'm not sure where it went, but now it's back. <clears throat> I think mostly because of the big name podcasts, the serials and the um this American Life and stuff. But we local folks, you know, we we try. And uh, as you discovered, there's a bunch of podcasts that are produced for national consumption, but right here in the Triangle. Absolutely. And I think that people are discovering that you could do things in podcasts that you can't do with other media. I mean, Gary, um, you were talking when we initially spoke that podcasting is approachable for people. I mean, you don't need a big studio you can uh, you don't even need something this big right exactly um it it's nice it's great to have all this great equipment but you know if you have an interest and you have um, a voice for radio <laughs> don't need that don't need that anymore it, it, speaking of, of noise though clicking clicking in, in the and beeping in the background is jonathan frieden yes yeah jonathan frieden is your photographer and oh uh, can we get a shot that has him a little bit in it yeah He's very Hello, tall. Hello, Amber. There, there he I is. <laughs> I don't know which camera to look at. Uh, I keep switching cameras, so, okay. yeah. <laughs> We're in there somehow. Yeah, there, okay, see, it, uh, it, is it your decision, Jonathan, whether I'm the uh, the cover boy or not? Uh, it's, a, it's a joint decision. Publishing. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Carry Magazine is, um, what do I want to, how do I want to describe this? It's, it's not political. Nope. We talked about this when you were here interviewing me. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's it's polite. We hope so. It's a general interest lifestyle magazine that covers, again, like I said, the, the people and places and events in Western Wake County, primarily Apex, Morrisville, and Cary. Uh, people sometimes forget that we write about Apex and Morrisville, but uh, we we cover the three towns in Western Wake County, and we do... We do a lot of business stories, a lot of things that um, people are talking about, and uh, our audience is primarily female, which is fine because I'm female, so I figure I <laughs> know what is of interest to our readership. So um, it's a lot of fun. I'm looking at the logo. I can sort of barely read it. Carrie Apex Morrisville, Holly Springs, Fuquay. And the RTP. So Actually, to get them all in there. Have you yeah, dropped some of those? Is that we old? Have, so that's a little outdated. In uh, January, the, we... The sp- internet remembers yeah, everything. We spun off Holly Springs and Fuquay Varina. And now we have two publications. Our company publishes another magazine called Maine and Broad. And that magazine writes about Holly Springs and Fuquay Varina. And if you get a chance to find that it's free distribution in uh those two towns so why it, main and broad i believe it's the main cities of the two Fuqua, and Holly Springs. oh the downtown uh, main streets okay okay yeah i've been there and i should have remembered but uh but i didn't sorry i should know that but it <laughs> i don't edit that magazine so it, it's not as trippingly off my tongue as my own magazine is okay so i've got um I've got your uh, website sitting up here, um, which gives you an idea. You, know, you need to refresh it. We changed. That's all uh, August or uh, June I, June I, stuff, but refresh I just, it. I just brought it up like this morning. I think it's gone up yet, the new one. Oh, there, there it is. is. Brand new. Okay. Um, so I guess one question about doing magazines is uh, 
Wh- which what's more important, the print magazine or the website these days? For us, it's still the print magazine, um, but it's a integrated media company. That sounds very pretentious, <laughs> but it basically no, means no we... more pretentious than calling this the Triangle <laughs> Talk Show. <laughs> um, it's a, as I said, it's a little pretentious, but um, it, basically, it means we have a lot of things that we generate income from, and. We do not just the the magazine is our primary focus because um, it's our biggest uh, readership. That's where people find us. It's free and it's by subscription. So you can actually, even though it's a free magazine, you can actually get it delivered to your to your home for, I think it's 20 bucks a year, which is nothing. Yeah, I mean, cheap. yeah, it's dirt cheap. Um, so I think it's a great deal. Um, and you get to see my smiling face. <laughs> at least once a month um you're, you're not not like oprah you don't put yourself on the cover of every oh god issue. no god no that would be exhausting <laughs> um it's bad enough being on the editor's letter page but um anyway so we so, do so, so this for you doing this interview for you this this is a, a trial it's a stretch it's a stretch for me but that's okay um I've spent my career on the other side of the glass too, you know. But then I always wanted to be here. I always looked at those f- folks doing the the broadcasting thing, the talent thing, and um, and said, "I can, I can do that, and I can do it better." Turns out, I could almost do it, and I definitely couldn't do it better. <laughs> but that's what podcasting is for now. <laughs> yeah, it, this is a stretch for me, but um, it, as long as we stick to the magazine, I'll talk about the magazine all you want. It's Absolutely fine. Oh, what I was going to say is we also have um, an email newsletter that goes out to about 35,000 subscribers, and we also do three events per year. So it's, uh, I say it's, I edit a magazine, but we, we have our fingers in a lot of pots. Okay. So what are the events? The events are, the next one coming up is our Women of Western Wake, and it is a um, forum on empowering women in the community and the workplace and we have five fantastic women who have made a huge impact on the western wake community we uh, invite them to come in and we have a panel discussion about we learn about what the what their secrets to success are and um like i said it's it's a it's a great event and um i can't Say who they are right now. You know, you know. I do know, and they well. Privilege I guess, of being the editor, right? Um, they will be announced again, maybe with this podcast, but uh, with the September issue, they'll be in the September issue. Okay. Remember, we're embargoed here. Oh, right. So um, let me see if I can remember them offhand. <laughs> um, we have, let's see, Catherine Truitt, who is the Chancellor of WGU. WGU, the Western Governors University. Um, we have, oh gosh, I don't have it in front of me. It's going to be embarrassing. Yeah, um, yeah we, we shouldn't do this then. Yeah, don't do that because I don't have my notes in front of me. <laughs> okay. I, I won't edit that out, but yeah. it just, it's, it's, a, it's a little sneak peek. Yeah, it's just a little yeah. sneak peek. Um, I won't, the reason I won't edit it out is not because I'm mean. It's, it's, editing is too much work. <laughs> I just push the button and off it goes. Well, let's just say that 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 uh, Catherine is is one of the five, and it's going to be a great day. Okay, and this is not a competition f- between those five. They're, they've all made it. They've all made it. Okay, they've so all made it, and uh, the stories are done. It's just a matter of um, oh, the other one is that um, I should know this because I interviewed her, Lori Bush, uh, at Kerry Councilwoman. She was a fantastic interview. So. Um, so yeah, it'll be okay. a fun day. People I should get on the podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now that I have a contact. Because <laughs> you, you really, no, nobody pays attention to me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you found this. I'm not searchable. I, you know, I, don't, I don't know the search optimization thing, so I'm hard to find. Somehow you found this. That's your job. Yeah, that's <laughs> kind of my job. The Google is ama- an amazing, amazing tool. I don't know how I would do I, my job without the Google. I have Googled myself when I go into incognito so that Google doesn't know who I am. Uh, I'm like in the 10th page 
if you know things like Triangle Podcast, Raleigh Podcast, Kerry Podcast. I'm on the tenth page. Stuff that has has come and gone fifteen years ago. Well, podcasts weren't around fifteen years ago. <laughs> Stuff that has come and gone. They're they're in the first page. So I don't know how you did it. Somehow you found it. I'm glad you did. Yeah, I I, I can't remember how, but it was. Um, yeah, I just you know I when I anytime I do a story, it's it's. Uh, I do a lot of research and on the front end. I mean, people don't, they think, oh, you just go and talk to people. Well, there's a lot of work <laughs> on the front end. You have to do, do your homework. Yes, kids, you still have to do homework when you're an adult. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you said, as long as they don't talk about you and just talk about the magazine, you're okay. But I'm curious, how'd you got to this point? Which, there's a little bit of background for you on the magazine. You, you, I mean, you went to school to study real journalism. And by the way, I worship journalists. I've loved journalists <laughs> all of my life. The best class I ever took in college was a semester of journalism. It taught me how to write. All the English mm -hmm. classes I took did not teach me how to write. The journalism class taught me how to write. It was valuable. So I love journalists. I wish I could have been one, but I, I didn't have the guts. Well, thank you. No, um, I just have always loved newspapers. And uh, originally, I thought I would be um, a writer, but just didn't have enough ideas. But I found if I talked to interesting people, then the ideas would come. So that seemed to be a little bit better. Um, well, a writer who does only their own ideas, that's a novelist. Right, exactly, exactly. But um a little bit of background, how I came to be, it's a long and winding road, as they say, but um, originally I'm from St. Louis and studied English literature of all things and uh, eventually decided that that was not the path for me, wound up getting a journalism degree from University of Missouri, Columbia, yay. Um, go, go, go fighting. It's a go Tigers. Okay. Um, and eventually moved to Raleigh. My husband works for the News and Observer, and I also worked for the McClatchy Company for the Cary News for 11 years before I found my way to Cary Magazine when, um, as everyone knows, and I'm sure your audience knows, the newspaper industry is very volatile, and I was volatile uh, out the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's part, part of what I want to talk about. Absolutely. Down the road here someplace. Um, so your your husband works for the News and Observer. He's still there? Yes, he is. Is he in, in, in uh, writing media or stuff, or is he production? What does he do? Um, he, when we met, he was a picture editor, and he did that for many years at the News and Observer, but now he is a video producer. Okay, so he does what I've done for a lot of my career. Exactly, and exactly. over there... I don't know about you guys at Carrie Magazine. Uh, do you do any video yet? I've been trying to get Jonathan to do video <laughs> for about five years, but um, there's a button on that camera that will you know start recording video, isn't there? I'm too busy with stills. Uh, yeah, but um, if we can get somebody to, uh, I would love to do video, but. We have a small staff, and as you know, video editing takes a um, a time commitment. That's why. I'd, I'd, <clears throat> on the other hand, if you only knew someone who had cameras, complete video editing system over there, I'm just saying. I'll give you my car. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. I'm cheap. <laughs> I can work cheap. Um. Okay, so he was he was already working at the News and Observer, and you met him and came here. Actually, we were both working for the Atlanta Journal Constitution. In the story's uh, getting complicated. Yeah, it's very complicated. I've been, I've worked all over the South for following, going to newspaper to newspaper, and um, but uh, yeah, we we lived in Atlanta for about nine years. We met there at the newspaper, and uh, decided that was that a McClatchy. Uh, no, uh, the Atlanta Journal is owned by Cox. Okay, I'm just trying to make the connections here. The connection was that by the time we left, we had an almost two-year-old, and we wanted to move closer that so that our children would be closer to their grandparents. And uh, my husband's family lives in Virginia, and he has 
he worked at the Durham newspaper for a number of years, knew a lot of people in Raleigh, loved the area. And uh, we moved here in 2000. So okay. we, so it was before all the kudos, but, but <laughs> before everyone said, this is the best place to live. Right. But he already knew it was the best place to live because he had lived here in the eighties. So um, yeah. I beat you by 10 years. I was here in 90. I feel like a native. Wow. I feel like, you know, I, I should, every other word out of my mouth should be y'all and I should have a Southern accent by now, but I don't. Apparently. Well. I'm not hearing it anyway. My uh, my Midwestern family says I have a Southern accent, but I don't hear it. St. Louis is almost the South. Some consider it the South. Yes, it is almost yeah. the South. Selfish. Yes. Uh, I mean, I grew up in Chicago, so. Yes, Chicago is not the South. <laughs> Definitely not. Although the story is my wife, uh, who is a native North Carolinian, born in Winston-Salem, could not have married a Yankee. So I'm a Midwesterner. And there's a difference. <clears throat> and I'm not sure what St. Louis would be. I don't, I don't think St. Louis could be Yankee at all. No, it's it's Midwestern. I consider it Midwestern. But yep. um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm lobbying for the cover here. Should I give? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm not going to be on the cover, am I? Probably not. <laughs> Never know. This is you, you, when you do some articles that are um, a paragraph or two about one person doing something, and then another paragraph or two about somebody else doing something similar. And mm -hmm. you got the Apex Peak City podcast mm -hmm. that's going to be part of this. Yep. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And uh, are you getting any others? Um, I'm still reporting the story, so it's okay. a work in progress. So we'll all get a paragraph. Yeah. So probably more than a paragraph. four hour interview on, on uh, the other day. And I'll get a paragraph. <laughs> well, it wasn't four hour. interview. No, I think it was 30 minutes about. Yeah. <clears throat> anything you want to know, anything that you missed, feel free. So I, uh, why did you think you wanted to be a journalist? The English thing wasn't working out. Um, the opportunity to make a living writing, and um, I, I still love writing. I still, uh, it's, it's hard work, but um, I don't know that I would do anything else. So. You got the great American novel in there somewhere? No, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. And the great American short story. And he, here's the crazy thing though, that along the way, I always thought that I would be some, you know, famous foreign correspondent, but, or some, you know, work for the New York times or the Washington post. But Somewhere along the way, I fell in love with community journalism, and I just really love the stories that, you know, people really care about. There's their hometown schools, the, the people down the street, the, the restaurant that just opened, and they want to know what's good, to, if it's worth the, the money or what, waiting to stand in line to go get something for dinner. I mean, those stories are the ones that really impact people's lives. And I know, Gary, that you've probably found that too with the Triangle Podcast. I mean, people really want to know. They're, they're nosy. They want to know what their neighbors are doing. <laughs> well, <clears throat> with, as far as the Triangle Talk Show is concerned, nobody cares. <laughs> <clears throat> nobody knows what we're doing. Nobody knows we're here. But I'm, we're working on changing that. It starts with a paragraph <laughs> on page 56 of the Gary <laughs> <Carrie> Magazine. <laughs> 46 or the cover or the cover you never know you, do, do people generally lobby to for the cover <laughs> no. i think it depends but what, what, what qualifies for a cover um, just to see how far i'm how far i've got to reach it, it's actually it, it really is a team decision i mean we we uh we work with a fabulous uh, graphic designer and this is, this is um, sounding like the debates so it's, it's a joint di discussion and, and we generally don't know until we see everything in front of us until everything, the issues almost finished. And then, uh, so pick out what, it's, and I it's have what to, you think is going to get people to pick it up off the stand. Yeah. And I, and I have to tell you, you're fighting against, uh, September is also our fashion issue. So you're fighting against, um, 20 something or, uh, models. So mm -hmm. I hate to break that to you. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, I did wardrobe change for this. I, I had a, a very white, bright shirt on first, and I, it was kind of flaring out on my camera, and I figured that, yeah, it's going to be too much contrast. So I, I've i never done that in my life. I, the only time I've changed clothes is my wife says, you're not wearing that, are you? What? A t-shirt with holes in it is not going to be good enough for the, for, the, for the ball, the tuxedo cap ball we're going to? 
no, honey, wear your suit. The only time in the year I ask you to wear your suit. Well, it's a good cause. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Uh, okay, twenty-something fashion models. Sorry. Could we bring one one of them here? <laughs> I didn't do that photo shoot. Uh, did you do that one? Yes. I that did. was a rough one, right? Yes. Yeah. Suffered. Mm. Suffered for his art. So yeah, community journalism is, um, you didn't want to go to the New York Times and write headline stories? I just find, you know, at one time when I was, you know, 25, sure. But um, like I said, you know, you, you find the things that you find most rewarding, and I really enjoy being in people's lives i mean there's i don't know that people would call me up and and you know thank me for a story that i did you know if i were working at the new york times i just don't think that's going to happen and that happens to me a lot and and you know i'm i'm not the kind of person who um when i worked at the carry news every now and again i'd get a call from somebody you know very upset about some story the nno had done and i'm like <laughs> I didn't write that. I mean, what, there's really, you, it's, you kind of have to step back and say, I mean, you can't explain the First Amendment to somebody who's <laughs> angry on the phone. I yeah. mean, it, it's just, so it's. Uh, I would just say that I'm waiting for the first person to communicate to me that they're really angry about a show that I did. <laughs> uh, that's that, that's going to be a milestone that I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to, to cover. Well, it's not fun. Let me um, tell you that. Okay, so I mean, there is there is hard hitting journalism. There's you know blood and guts political stuff, and um, and then there's feel good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you're in the feel good business. I am, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, it's great. I love it. And um, the interesting thing too is that. Um, when I tell people what I do for a living, they're kind of surprised. They say, print journalism. I mean, you know, I can't believe that people still buy magazines. And I'm like, are you kidding? I mean, we, our readers love what we put out. Um, we are growing. Like I said before, we added another, a second magazine in January. Advertisers love us. They want to be in the magazine. It's a quality product. And... Um, you know, I have a lot of pride in that. We put out something that people actually want and the community supports it. And there is nothing wrong with that. So how how does that work? And the News and Observer is shrinking to almost nothing. We, you know, I can't speak to the News and Observer's business model, um, but... Well, it's not just the News and Observer. It's, it's almost every print newspaper. Washington Post, New York Times, doing fine. Um, and I was just listening to a story this morning that said that they have now gotten far more um, online subscriptions than they had print. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of it. You know, maybe my beloved Chicago Tribune is is doing okay. I don't know. Um, but I, I know the News and Observer when I got here was you know that thick every day, mm -hmm. and now it's you know sad and, it, they're, and they're trying to go online and, mm -hmm. and do the digital thing that everybody's got to do to survive but i don't know how well that's working for them i think that what these niche publications like carry magazine and main and broad and other print magazines and i gotta tell you you can go to um the farmer's market or or any a lot of restaurants or um, shopping centers in the area. And there's six community magazines for free. I mean, there's Carolina Parent, there's Wake Living, I mean, 919. And all these magazines have figured out that what advertisers want and what readers want is they want to know about what is going on in their own backyard. And even when I worked for the Cary News, there were a lot, we had a lot of subscribers who told us flat out, we only subscribe to the NNO because we get the Cary News <laughs> twice a week. Yeah. I, I throw the rest of the paper away. I only look at the Cary News because it has 
the school news. So I know about my high school sports. I know about the new business that opened down the street. I know about my neighbor who did this fantastic thing. And not only that, when I read the community newspaper or Carrie magazine, I don't feel like I want to throw it across the room. (laughs) I want to, you know, it's a feel good story. And it's above all, it's news you can use. We do a great, we do a lot of that. It's, um, you know, it's, fashion tips. It's um, a new restaurant you should try. It's um, here's a, a food trend that maybe, maybe it's a brewery or a distillery or, um, you know, a new business that opened up that maybe you didn't know existed. And, or here's a trend that's happening. In, uh, for instance, podcasts, this is a nat- national trend that, hey, it's happening in our backyard. Uh, check out these local folks who are doing great work. And those kinds of stories are what people care about. And that's the thing. If you get the audience, the money will follow. And I think a lot of newspapers forgot that. They were putting in national news and they cut their local staffs. And as soon as they cut their local staffs or um, I know the News and Observer got rid of the community newspapers. and Yeah, Cary News is gone, all the... Carrie News is gone. Um, and they did, um, I don't know, a dozen. You know, there right. Were, every three blocks, there was a new paper. Yeah. yeah. And North Raleigh. North uh, Raleigh News is gone. Um, Garner, Garner. Yeah. The East Wake News is gone. And and it's not like the main news and observers picked up all that stuff. Yeah. Although their website probably has A some. little bit. But, but, I mean, it's heartbreaking for somebody who was in that world for, for you know, more than a decade, it was heartbreaking because I knew the people who relied on that coverage and it's just not there. The columnists have pretty much gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I miss Barry Saunders. (laughs) He was a lightning rod. Yeah. (laughs) And, uh, well, I mean, I grew up with Mike Royko. Yeah. So when I came down here, it's like, well, Barry, you're my man. (laughs) And now he's got it. He's got a a website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He he still does his columns. I, I don't, I don't have it in a prominent enough place on my tablet to see it often. I really need to you boost should, him up. You should get him on the podcast. I'm sure he'd be lively. Uh, we'll give that a try. Barry, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, the your your niche mm-hmm. apparently doesn't have online competition to steal the business away. Facebook isn't isn't stealing you away. Nope. Uh, Instagram, you're on all that, but those aren't those aren't taking your uh, your your reader's interest away from you. Nope. Now, is it because they're old? I don't think so, um, because we actually have... Um, well, maybe they are old. I mean, I don't know. Is, is <laughs> older. Older. Old-ish. I mean, we do... Um, do, you know, you know, you, do you know your demographics? I imagine you, I you do. research them some. Yeah, we do. Um, and it skew... It does... You know, it's not 18 to 25. That is true. But it's, um, it's. I'm guessing now, but I think it's like 30s to 50s, and it is female. Okay. So. Your advertiser, you, you got to tell your advertisers who they're going to. Absolutely. And um, I just, again, I don't have that in front of me. So I didn't know this was going to be a, a quiz. <laughs> I could have brought you all my notes. Clearly did not research the Triangle Talk Show well enough. And, and also, too, we, we just finished our, our most recent reader survey, so we're going to be coming out with um, new demographics. But um, I'm assuming that it's going to be um, late 20s, early 30s to uh, early to mid 50s female. Okay. And fairly affluent. That's the thing that we also do. Green carry. Yeah. Well, we're in Apex and Morrisville, too. What? I mean. <laughs> it's still affluent. Yeah. Not, not a big difference. Preston. And the other thing, too, is that, um, and I have to reiterate this, is that there are so many people moving to this area. Um, It's crazy. Well, it's not crazy. It's just, I mean, it's, it's yeah, well, it's. I think it is. Yeah. It's just awesome, but. It's awesome and wonderful. And those people, they want to know about the community. Where do they go? Do they go online? Maybe. Um, they do. I mean, uh, we have uh, a lot of folks, I'm sure, who visit the Cary Citizen, and I think there's a new 
a couple podcast or a couple new websites out there, but um, a lot of them go to Carrie Magazine and and. Yeah. But does that lead you to want to do a story with a uh, councilman about pro growth versus restricted growth, or do you stay way away from even that much politics? That's. Not your bailiwick. Not my bailiwick. Okay. I will let somebody else do let that Let Carrie story. Citizen do that. Let, let uh, what, what's our mayor's name? Har- Harvey? Harold Weinbreck. Harold, yeah. Let, let him do his podcast on that. Fortunately, there's there's one podcast in the area or one YouTube show that I do better than. That's the Carrie, <laughs> the Carrie City Council or the city <laughs> show. That I get more views than they do. What is it? Ted, not Ted TV. What is it called? Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Bud TV. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, actually, I think they probably, they probably get in the hundreds and I'm, I'm still in the dozens. So, okay. See ya. Thank you. Remember the cover. Yes. <laughs> uh, I want to be a cover boy. Mr. September. Remember? That's what I, it's not going to be, not going to be the centerfold either, right? Probably not. I'm sorry. Fashion models. I'll be happy with my paragraph. And you get a photo too. So and the photo. There you go. One of one of the seven hundred. That at least your film budget is low, because you know no film anymore. Just right. The, right. The SD card and some hard drive space. Yeah. So where's journalism going? Do you, do you? Uh, although you don't make broad interest journalism. Mm-hmm. You're you're in culture and and you know local stuff. Do you have an interest in all the journalism that's going on around you? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I'm still, you know, I I read all of the things. So okay, where's it going? Where is it now? We talked about a little bit about what, where is, where it is now. It's, I mean, it, it's bad for newspapers almost everywhere. Yeah, it's really interesting though, um, because every summer. I am very fortunate to, we have a, a, an intern that comes in and a young woman, Marine Elia, who spent the summer with us from UNC Chapel Hill to School of Communications. Sorry, I think it's Mass Communications. I can't remember the exact title. But anyway, UNC Chapel Hill. And bright, bright. Small school. Yeah, small school. And, but they have a decent journalism program. <laughs> and... Um, if you do say so. <laughs> yes, they do. And the great thing about working with young journalists is understanding that it's not just newspapers anymore. It's not just print. It's video. It's it's podcasts. It's radio. It's blogging. It's um, a short form documentary. It's it's. There's so many, it's so diverse right now and it's all storytelling. And as long as you have, I don't think that storytelling will ever go out of style and whether there will always be an outlet for people doing um, writing about people and the issues that people care about. I mean, for instance, a lot of podcasts that I've been listening to are doing great stories about uh, the politics of the day and um, websites, you know, Politico, for instance, I, I, it, and some of these other websites are doing great investigative journalism pieces. Reveal, I believe, is another podcast that I listen to. I mean, just... Are they are they doing the investigative or are they just regurgitating someone else's investigation? No, I think they're doing doing their own. Yeah, Politico is that's expensive. Yeah, Politico and some of the, that's the other thing it's going toward is um and I can't remember which one it is. Um they are going more toward the nonprofit model and and um Boy, that's that's easy to accomplish. <laughs> no, it's but I mean I mean it's not easy to, to to survive in it's easy to not make a profit oh yes yes it is but the idea of again and you spoke a little while ago about the success of the new york times and the washington post i think one of the reasons that they have been so successful is they have gone to their readership they have said flat out if you support this journalism if you support our product invest in us and i think I mean, I didn't subscribe to the New York Times until that call went out a few years ago, and I, I'm, you know, I subscribed to both of them online, and um, so. 
Yeah, I, I subscribe to uh, the Washington Post for the first time last year yeah. uh, because they offered a half price digital subscription for like 50 bucks. They'll get my renewal. Mm -hmm. They're valuable enough to me. I, I, I can't afford both them and the Times. And I had to make a, a decision because the Times is running specials too. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, you know, the Times are probably doing extra fine and the Post probably needs a little bit of me. Mm -hmm. So that's that was my decision. But um, I hear plus that, they're closer. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I like Jeff Bezos. I was going to say Jeff Bezos has a little bit of money, so maybe yeah. he can. Uh, He's flo I, he floated him for a while. I think they're not. They're doing okay on their own, uh, and sending money back to back to Amazon. <laughs> I guess um, I, I am disappointed. I didn't get a a deal because I've got Amazon Prime too. He's keeping them separate, apparently. Yeah. Uh, so I, I chose them, and I've subscribed to the News and Observer since I moved here. <clears throat> um, I did switch to the digital, which is a little cheaper, because um, mm -hmm. I don't need a stack of papers piling up, waiting to go out to recycling. Yeah, the digital product is actually really good, especially if you can read it on your tablet. You actually get bonus material, which um, yeah, which is which is a great deal. Yep, and and um, and that's what I do. I I download the PDF of the day's paper. Mm -hmm. So because I'm old school, I like the way the paper's laid out. I don't mind getting two paragraphs into a story and then saying, ah, it finishes 15 pages from now. And I won't remember what it was when I get down there and I got to go back and look. I don't mind that. I don't, getting the same thing on the website where it's all one continuous thing doesn't work for me. <laughs> plus, plus I like the comics. Yeah. Everybody likes the comics. Apparently, I, I get the impression that if they make a change in the comics, they will get more heat on that than from any political story they do. That is true. What is wrong with you people? <laughs> comics are meaningless. <laughs> All right. So, um, so, so the, the people that are coming into journalism today have a wider uh, landscape of things they could go into. But are, the, are those things viable? Are they making money? The, You know, I don't know anything about that. I can't speak to that. I know that young people are getting jobs. Um, I would assume so, else they would probably not be signing up to go to uh, journalism school. But um, it's, oh, it's it's a, a it's a uh, uh, my vocabulary is failing me. It, it it's 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 a glamorous occupation to get it, into. Is it? I don't know. It looks that way before you get into it. Okay. Didn't it? I mean, wasn't that starry eyed when you were Yeah, but that was thirty college? years ago. That was a long time ago. Well, even but it's even like more now. You know, all those cable channels, all those I guess podcasts, I guess. And, yeah. Um just all laid out before you oh I can I can get into that. I I mean I've lived in that in that media mix for my entire professional career. When you're the button pusher, not so glamorous, but mm -hmm. but it's still your your glamour adjacent. I suppose. I mean, it's I I find it I find it interesting, and um, like I said, I don't know that I, I would want to do anything else. I've just been very very fortunate. But um, the the other thing too is what I said before about storytelling will never go out of style. Um, don't forget the advertising side too, because I would love to forget that. Unfortunately, and also the the there were, I think that there are public relations firms and also um, internal communications for companies because that's the other thing that that I didn't even ta speak about because these um, a lot of folks coming out of schools, coming out of communication programs at universities. They can go work for Red Hat or um, um, Amazon or, or uh, gosh, uh, SAS and write internal communications or write. Let me do an eye roll here. But my point is. You can get a job. Right. There are jobs out there for people who know how to write. And, and what you also said before is the one thing that journalism school does is it teaches you how to write. It teaches you how to write coherently. It gives you a... Which my college professors just loved me for because they were getting these high school graduates that couldn't write because mm -hmm. they took English. 
Mm -hmm. for all those years that didn't teach you how to write. See, English teaches you how to read, but journalism will teach you how to write. Yeah. So when I, what I say is that when I turned in a, an essay, I gave them a magazine article. I'm sure they loved that. They did. You know, it was, it was, here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm telling you, here's what I told you. Mm -hmm. you know, and then the top paragraph, it was the who, what, where, when, and why. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they could understand what I was telling them. You know, <laughs> a plus, plus, plus. Good job. That didn't happen in high school. Uh, the reason I did the eye roll on the PR stuff, I mean, I've, I've worked for advertising agencies, uh, freelance for them and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And, you know, that is, you can be creative if uh, your client will let you, but for the most part, they won't. And if you are the PR guy at Amazon or any other big triangle companies, you're toeing the party line. They don't want any creativity from you. So just, I mean, that is my impression of it, not having ever done it. But my my going back to my original point is that there are jobs. And they, get, they get a job and a good paycheck. Yeah, good jobs for uh, good writers and folks who can communicate. Yeah. And if you believe in the product, if you work for a company that that, that you believe in um, and that, that does something you can believe in, well, then you can be pretty happy with what you're doing. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But uh, in the meantime, we'll go back to the, the previous show with uh, – a previous show, because we're out of sequence here. A previous show with a comedian that was pointing the gun at his head in his, in his logo, <laughs> at his corporate job. Yeah, I, that's my impression of a lot of corporate PR jobs. And I never went that direction. Yeah, I mean, I think it, again, I think it just really depends on where you are and uh, what you, what's important to you. Yeah. So. This will never be an editorial in the Carry Magazine. No, we don't do editorials. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um. So the media landscape has broadened out, mm -hmm. gotten in depth. There's plenty of opportunity. Uh, you're, you go to J school and you may not start writing for the local newspaper or the TV station or the mm -hmm. cable, you know, cable news or something. Because um, I'm leaving the whole TV land part out of this. Because that's still hard to do. Yeah. That, that's a real limited opportunity. Cause I've, I've worked in it all my life. It seemed easy to me, but it, you know, and I, and I've made it, you know, here, here in the triangle talk show studio with four cameras surrounding us. Have you seen all the camera shots we can do? Camera one, <laughs> cam, camera two, camera three, camera four. There we go. There we go. Pretty impressive for a podcast. Pretty good. Just leftover stuff from, from my old career. Uh, so the future is bright and dark. I think it's, it's yeah, bright and dark. It, it's yeah. I we, think. My bottom line in all this is that we desperately need the reporting that only newspapers have done and no one is picking it up. And that is not the stuff that you want to do at Carrie magazine. Um, that is to go to the legislature and to city hall and to find out, the evil dark underbelly of what's going on, where the corruption is, where the deals are being made, where people that we elected are selling us out. And the newspapers have done that real well. Again, I'm native, uh, well, you know, not quite native, but native of Chicago and the Tribune and Mike Royko and all that. And their stings and their undercover reporting. And um, even the News and Observer has been able to do that in the 30 years that I've been here, but mm -hmm. not so much anymore. I think um, my my uh, doppelganger namesake, Gary Pierce, the, the guy who'd been the political um, consultant for Governor Hunt. Um, I, I hear thunder. <laughs> the little thunderstorm is brewing up. We were doing this in, in uh, er, I guess, early August, beginning of August. Mm -hmm. when we're actually recording. Um, I think he, he wrote a column that said that the news and observer had gone from, I don't remember the exact statistic, but it was several hundred reporters mm -hmm. down to less than 50. I think it's probably accurate. Yeah. And if that's the case, they can't dig the stuff out that they used to, you know, they're, they're doing pretty good on, on the ninth district shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Um, but well, we need them and where are they going to come from next? Not Facebook. I'm not sure. 
I mean, the, the, the good thing is, like I said, that um, there are a lot of young people out there. And um, my hope is that uh, they will also find it rewarding to do the kinds of stories, whether it's for a newspaper or for a podcast or for a radio show. But um, And some of, them gonna, some of them are going to want to write about fashion. Absolutely. And food. Mm-hmm. And events. That's right. So uh, let's talk fashion. <laughs> I'm more comfortable talking about food, but that's okay. Oh, let's talk about food. I love food. <laughs> I am so afraid to go to new restaurants. Why is that? Uh, because I don't want to have to figure out what their menu is. And I'm, I'm going to get a club sandwich anyway, or a hamburger, you know, a cheeseburger, mm-hmm. or you know, maybe a slab of salmon or something. I'm not going to go for their fancy stuff. Um. And my wife and I, um, it, it you, you got to pry us out of our same old usual stuff and take us to something different. Even, maybe not better necessarily, but probably <laughs> just something different. You know, I'm happy at Subway. <laughs> so, so where do you, you like you, to go you, and you carry? Did, you didn't, you didn't do a forehead slap on no. that. <laughs> it's no, very polite it's okay. of you. <laughs> where do you like to go and carry? Um, the newest place that we've gone to. That, um, that I like a lot is Abbey Road. Yep. It's not a new place, but, you know, it's just, it's like I, I, I've driven past it going back and forth on Chatham Street mm-hmm. um, hundreds of times because I got a friend that lives down past that. And I look in their, their parking lot, always looks pretty busy. And I'm thinking, I don't know, is that kind of a place for me? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't, I'm, I'm scared. They have a really good burger. So. Yeah, they do. They have my favorite burger. Yes, in town. It's, it's delicious. They, On, they do it very, very well. And they'll make it rare. Yes. They'll make it, the way I like a hamburger is when it, when it moves gently when I first make my first bite. <laughs> when it comes out and introduces itself and says, hi, I'm your burger. <laughs> I'm, still, <laughs> I'm still alive enough to introduce myself. And now, enjoy. So, um, where should I go? Let's see. Um, I really like the Crosstown Pub. If you like um, good, solid American food downtown, I'm a huge downtown carry supporter. Um, lo- Down, they've done some downtown. I, I used to kid my wife; she would say the word downtown and mean carry. Mm-hmm. And I would say there is no downtown carry. There is oh, now. no, no, there is now. Um, I also like the postmaster, the guy who runs that is, um, he's just a great guy. And did the post office close? Did they convert that? (laughs) No, no, but, um, it's, uh, my husband calls it, it, it's a, it's Southern with a, with a twist and, uh, it's quite good. Um, trying to think other places in Cary. I picked my wife up at the train station. Um, she takes the train down to Charlotte quite often. Mm-hmm. And, um, and a lot of times she, she was aiming for the, the train that leaves there at three, but she's got chores to do and she can't take the train until it leaves at seven and it shows up at 10 o'clock. There, there are people downtown carry at 10 o'clock at night. Absolutely. Walking down, down the sidewalks and, and, uh, inhabiting the many restaurants down there. Mm-hmm. What happened? When did that happen? <laughs> The town of Cary was very intentional about bringing those businesses in, and they have uh, done just a fantastic job with uh, revitalizing that downtown. But again, they were very intentional about it. It was interesting that you say that because when I first started working for the Cary News, you know, a long time ago, I guess it was in the the aughts, um, there were all these articles about the downtown revitalization plan and this and that. And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. But here it is, you know, 2019 and everything that was in that plan has come to pass. And it's just been uh, incredible. A lot of that has to do with the arts venues downtown, um, the, the carry, the arts center. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the intentional, investment in those downtown businesses um that the uh, for instance i just heard an interview with the jay and jeremy bond who founded the bond brothers brewery about how the town was very intentional about the kind of businesses that they wanted to bring downtown and they were very 
intentional about bringing in a brewery because they knew that it would attract people downtown as a destination. So just, um, they got some people going a brewery, the, the devil's work. Oh, but it's, you know, it's a great place to hang out. I mean, they have a great patio. Um, if you like beer, it's a great place to just chill out on a, on a summer afternoon or a fall afternoon, especially, uh, the fall in North Carolina is warm and it's just a, a great place to chill. So yeah, summer is warm. <laughs> It's summer miserable house. summer is too warm but fall is really nice so yeah we get some patio we get a month or three of patio either side of the uh of summer and winter and then mm-hmm. it gets too cold and it gets too hot but i like the outdoor stuff when yeah when it's nice um what about away from downtown are are we getting little hubs of activity i know there's the um, you know the, the i can't remember the shopping center name where, where the target became the I guess that's Morrisville, um, oh, that Park, shopping center, Park West. Yeah. Park West, um, yeah. yeah. Is that the office that our office is very close to Park West? So I'm in Park West all the time, and um, it's super vibrant. And again, the folks who run that are very. Is there a scene there, or is it just stores and restaurants? I'm only there during the day, <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Um, there's a yeah, so I'm only there during the day. So, but got a favorite restaurant over there. Um, for lunch, I always go to Zoe's, but I don't know why I haven't seen you there. <laughs> I mean, I may have, but, yeah, but I, I, I usually, um, it's, I'm usually in the target. So your listeners can find <laughs> me usually in the target doing my, I, we're going to run into each other at some point out there. <laughs> Although, um, tonight when my wife comes in on the 10 o'clock train, we'll go to ruckus next door because mm-hmm. Zoe's will be closed. Right. Ruckus is open late. Although it'll be, uh, so today is Thursday. They won't have their full menu. They have a late menu. But all we want is a couple slices of pizza. Yeah. Their pizza's pretty good. Yep. It's pretty good. And uh, they have uh, folks in Cary love them. They've been our uh, uh, a Reader's Choice winner for for a couple of years. So it's a... It's to, a- to get my wife to listen to this whole show, can you tell me what happened to the restaurant formerly known as On? The restaurant formerly known as On. Well, the good news is, is and that... Then, and then almost known as, what was it, Boku? It's going to be Koan, is I believe what the new name of the restaurant is. And yeah. again, I don't have my notes in front of me. I didn't know this was going to be a quiz. Um, I apologize. I don't really. <laughs> it's okay. This is the gotcha journalism. Um, yeah. So that is opening up later on this fall hopefully by september will be open um we're very excited about it and truthfully i don't know exactly what happened to on when it closed um it was very sudden so so yeah that was um jim goodnight's wife's restaurant did i have that right yes i believe so okay and that's a story my wife used to work for sass oh, okay. she hears stories I can't repeat them. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know whether to believe them or not. No, I am. There are stories. Yeah, I'm very excited about um, about the new restaurant. What's coming it, in what's there. it going to feature? What, what direction will it take? I think. I mean, it's it's going to be. It's run by the same people who do Bo- Boku, so I'm assuming that it's something along those lines. But yeah, I know um, that name, but I don't know what they do. Down, it, downtown, I've been to City. S I T I. Which is Mediterranean, Lebanese, yep. Yep. I've um, been to, that may be it. <laughs> Close to it, anyway. Let's see. Well, you need to, We. I was actually at Barcelona last night. It's a tapas bar, and that was a lot of fun. The food was, was very tasty. Um, I, but, I did not starve at City, but I was uncomfortable. <laughs> um, so, I'm sorry, what was the question? Um, which way on is going to go? Yeah. Um, or which way, um, Koan? I'm not exactly sure. Um, again, um, yeah, I'm just going to say, I, I just am not sure. Right Wait now. for the article to come yeah. out for the, for the review. Right. <laughs> that will be, right. that's on our, that's scheduled for November, December. So hopefully that will, uh, come to fruition. Morrisville got a eating hub. I go to Morrisville for the. Smithfield Chicken and Barbecue. <laughs> the the healthy eating hub. Yeah. Well, do they have you know, a go-to place? 
Morrisville's coming up. Um, I mean, they're they're in the shadow of Kerry. You know, they're they're the the black black sheep triangle town hiding behind Kerry, but they're coming up on their own. Mm-hmm. They they've been. Uh, You're going to let me get away with saying that? No, I think so. I <laughs> okay. mean, I think it's uh, like I said. I mean, Park West is the the big thing right now. Oh, that uh, is Morrisville, isn't it? It is Morrisville. It is so close to Kerry. They can no, it is <laughs> Morrisville. Throw a rock, but. Um, and, um, the, the big thing that Morrisville has going for it is, uh, they have a lot of, it's a diverse community and it has, uh, a lot of kind of niche sporting venues. Um, I did a story, uh, when the cricket pitch in Church Street Park opened, or actually, I think that's what the name of the park was. I can't believe I haven't been there. Yeah, it's that was a lot of fun. I got to play cricket for the first time. That was a lot of fun. So Okay. I know they have a rock wall. They do indeed. So I've climbed it once or twice. My wife was into rock climbing a bit, you know, rock, not real rock climbing, rock wall mm-hmm. climbing for a bit, and she bought the gear, and, and then she bought the gear for me, because the only way I was going to go is if she bought it for me and we went once maybe twice she's been a few more times with other friends it was fun it was interesting i mean i climbed to the top i tagged the top said, okay been there done that she said no you got to do it faster <laughs> and you were on the easy one you got to go to the hard one <laughs> work your way up no i've done this we're good um <clears throat> durham's got a scene it does indeed yeah do you ignore durham I do. <laughs> Although we did do a, a story when the um, the axe throwing bar opened. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not looking at you like I don't believe you because I, I know that it's there. My wife's company was thinking about that for an event with their customers. Yeah, it's a huge um, team building uh, activity. So that was a lot of fun to yeah. do that. And of course, what we're thinking of is sharp axes, alcohol, what could go wrong? Absolutely. But it, no, it's, it's um, they have minders, handlers, who coaches. Um, they call them experts. And, uh, of course they do. <laughs> <laughs> who are, are, are uh, help you figure out how to do it and do it safely. So, but that, that was a lot of fun, but yeah, we, we I imagine they come down on you pretty hard if you face the wrong way. Yeah. You know, it's, it's yeah. like the, I've, I've been to uh, some pistol shooting ranges too. And you point that pistol anywhere near other than straight down the target and they're all over you. You're in, you're in trouble. Yeah. Hopefully the X, although they don't serve any alcohol to pistol ranges. No, but I th- it, they do keep it separate. I mean, the, the you can't bring beer into the axe throwing area. So can't bring it in a glass. It, it's already been consumed. Right, but you know what I mean. Yeah. You can't drink the beer while you're throwing axes. But... Here, hold my beer. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, is there anything else that uh, we need to? Get out of the way here. Is there anything left over from you interviewing me that? Uh, I don't think so. Um, now, now that you've decided to, perhaps this wasn't such a good idea after all. Oh, it's fine. Um, just like I said, um, we've got a lot of great stuff coming up in the September issue. And um, I'm looking forward to... And if anybody has any ideas for interesting people or things that we should be writing about, you know. Do you get most of your ideas from um, from uh, readers making suggestions or do you, a significant amount or is it all, you're really shoe leather to find out what's going on? A significant amount, to be quite honest. Um, and what happens is, well, it's also shoe leather too. I would say about a third of the ideas are reader suggestions okay. or, or people sending in press releases. I say reader su- suggestions. It's people saying, Hey, you should do a story about, you know, this business that I'm representing. But um, in, in all seriousness, a lot of times it's, um, and that's from that journal J school graduate that got the, uh, got the job at the company absolutely. and they write the press release. Exactly. I've done a lot of those. It's, you know, it's helpful. It's all, I mean, it's, it's from a variety of sources and it's from me 
Um, because as I said, I, I do li- read all the things and uh, I do consume a lot of media. So if I see a trend, a national trend, I'm like, hmm, I wonder if that's happening locally, a lot of that. Um, but again, going back to the shoe leather and the research, but I always am interested in hearing about um, interesting people and uh, places in the community because, um, you yeah. know, you got a little contact spot on the website, I imagine. We do. And you can send an email to editor at com. That will get to okay. me. And the website is com. Absolutely. com. All right. Thank you very much for, for, first of all, reaching out to, to me to, to, did you do any research before you asked? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Not enough. <laughs> Clearly not enough. Oh, this was fun. Your was favorite fun. podcast, though, is the Apex. I really like them a lot. I have gotten some. I actually have gotten a couple because they do a, they do a real podcast. They, they they get people to come in from the community and talk to them about stuff. And it's hard to be everywhere. I mean, I'm one person, so it's hard to cover three towns. So I try to to not really copy other media, but I get inspiration from other other stories that other people do. So that's a really vital, vitally important. Uh, I listen to them and maybe I won't do the same story, but maybe I'll do something a little bit different. Than and, and they read your magazine and steal Gosh, stuff Gosh, I hope so. <laughs> Round in circles. I um, briefly in, in my checkered long career working for NBC, uh, I was editing uh, segments that Phil Donahue did. Mm-hmm. My, probably my, one of my bigger claims to fame besides the roaming gnome behind me. Um, and I got uh, to know his producer real well. I'd only met Phil briefly once or twice, uh, but I worked with his producer all the time because she would sit behind me as we were editing his segments. And um, I would visit her office on the other side of the station, and she had newspapers piled up all over the place. Now, this was the late 70s, so mm-hmm. there was no internet. There was, you know, newspapers were your, your way of doing things. And I naively said, don't you come up with your own stories? Why are you digging all this stuff out of the newspaper? And she laughed at me. <laughs> said, no. She had a staff of three. She's not going to go dig everything up all by herself. She found interesting stuff that Phil could do a show on out of, she had newspapers from all over the country because mm-hmm. it was a national show, of course. And, and she would look at for interesting stories, probably not the ones on the front page, mm-hmm. probably the ones in the metro section. And, um, make the contacts and, and do the show. That's where I learned that this business is just totally incestuous. We're all stealing from each other. Yeah. And we, we do steal from each other, but, um, and it, hopefully it's uh, kind of like rap music. You, uh, you transform it. So it becomes your own. Yeah. So you may sample something from somebody else, but, but hopefully it will be, uh, uh, artistically transformed into something new. That's how I get away with all this fair use stuff. There you go. <clears throat> it's transformative. Go. I've made something new out of it. Absolutely. Repackaged. Repackaged it. Um, okay. So you are <clears throat> Amber Keister, senior editor at Carrie Magazine. Did, did, when you started there, what position did you start as? I started there as a, a writer, and uh, I wor- wrote part-time and did graphic design part-time for the uh, – parent company, I guess, which is SNA Communications, SNA Cherokee, and uh, did a lot of... I saw that name come up Mm -hmm. somewhere, but I don't know what it is. It's a... um, SNA Cherokee owns... um, It's a... How do I want to say this? It's a full-service media company based in Cary, and they own Cherokee Media Group, which publishes... uh, Carry Magazine, as well as several automotive-related uh, business-to-business publications, um, including Auto Remarketing and um, Auto Remarketing Canada, and those are pitched to the used car industry. It also uh, SNA Cherokee also owns SNA Communications, which does uh, public relations of all things. <laughs> and um, I didn't, I didn't mean it. I really didn't. Uh, public relations and uh, communication services for several businesses. Uh, Where's the Cherokee come from? 
That's a long story, and I'm going to let the founder. You can have the founder. <laughs> he can come tell me. Himself. He can tell you himself. Okay, because uh, I mean, we're at the Cherokee it's all in in the mountains. Yeah. Is there a connection at all? Again, you will have to. I will leave that. You can get Ron Smith, our our uh, founder, on the radio on the podcast, and, and okay. he can tell you that story. But uh, all right. So uh, Photoshop is your friend, I guess. At least it used to be. It used you to be. You did the graphic design stuff? It, yeah, it used to be. Not not so much now. In design? And... In design is what I mainly worked in. <laughs> yeah. I I did a magazine for a few years. Uh, this is InDesign's predecessor, PageMaker. Oh, boy. Wow. <laughs> so I was, I was the editor for this. I'm, I'm proud of it. It's, it looks glossy on the on the front, but it's, it turns to newsprint on the inside. I'm a magazine editor. At least I used to be for a couple of years. Um, okay, so uh, then you became senior editor mm -hmm. just by rising above your <laughs> Peter Principle. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I was a writer for about a year and then uh, became a co-editor. And then there was some uh, staffing changes about two, ed two years ago. And uh, we went down to one editor and I uh, got a new job title <laughs> along with more responsibility. So. And you're still writing. And still I do a am lot still of writing. writing. Yes. So I kind of do it all. All right. I'm going to let you go. Okay. Because um, these are good long shows. Uh, let's see. It was um, episode 70 something. This has been embargoed. We're recording in early August for release in early September, maybe late August ish. Somewhere in there. Editing Carrie Magazine. <laughs> and Thank you. I am Gary Pierce. I am Mr. September. I'll be the in the centerfold of the magazine. <laughs> I, I'm never going to get another person in here to do an interview. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Um, and that is it. Uh, I close this program with uh, the same thing every time. But any viewers that have made it all the way to the end know how I do it, which means you don't. I don't. I'm don't sorry. Know how I do this. You, you might be able to get this. Uh, the comedian that I did on the last show that I recorded, John Provoromo, got this right away. Let's see if you can get this. It's a three-word familiar phrase. I feel like I'm doing, um, like, what's my line? Match game, something like that. <clears throat> three-word familiar phrase that has, it's a sign-off for something. And it is these three words. And I'll do two, and you get to do one, if you can figure out what it is. Over and... Out. Everybody knows what that is. You know that's that's bad radio procedure. Oh, is it? It is bad radio procedure. Uh, I, I I did that for the first time on a pod. My introduction to podcast. I was I was a uh, a guest host for a podcast on a national podcast network where I learned about this stuff. It was in my hobby ham radio, and um, the show was still going. They used me for about six months, and then because of the attitude that you get from this show, decided they didn't want me anymore. But I, I closed the show with that one time. I said, okay, bye everybody, over and out. And I got email. Over and out is bad radio procedure. It is either over. Over means you can talk. Out means you're done. Everything is done, we're, we're out of here. You can't be over and out. And I said, sure you can. I mean, over to you, you can talk, but I'm not listening. <laughs> so over and out thank you very much well thank you it was a pleasure bye everybody you can wave bye, bye. oops <laughs>